Welcome to Design Patterns. The next pattern I'm going to present you is the Command Pattern. The Command Pattern is all about encapsulating a request. We want to decouple invocation from execution. What does this mean? Let me show you how it's built up. A client calls an, an, the execute method of a concrete command which is derived from the general command interface and this execute method does something. It contains a, a method which is executed in a context. So this is, the context is the receiver. It executes some actions on some context. The difference to the strategy is that the command knows its context. It knows all the data it needs to be executed. The strategy is more is only containing the behavior. The command contains the behavior and the data. The context is we invoke some behavior of an object. Just invoking. And the problem we want to invoke this operation regardless where it's running and regardless of the executing context. It should be self-contained. The force here is that we want to couple the invoker and the context of the request. Everyone could create a context, set it to the command, and then the command should run there independently of the invoker, independently of who created the command. Next one. We Sometimes we don't know the exact implementation. We want to call arbitrary commands, similar to the strategy. Then maybe we want to undo a specific command. A strategy cannot be undone. It's just a method call, and when it's done, it's done. Uh, a command, knowing its context and knowing its state, maybe could be undone by maybe reversing the operations or storing a state before and a state after the execution. What is the solution? We have to define an interface for calling commands. This interface has to be very simple, just like execute or do or run. Very often commands are also used for multi-threading, for encapsulating a task together with its data. And there it's often called start or run. Then we have to encapsulate somehow the behavior. And somehow we have to provide all needed parameters to the command so that they, they can be provided. And then we have to implement some means that an uh, invoker, a creator, can create these parameters and initialize these parameters and really set these parameters to the command. What are the consequences? Now, a request does not depend upon the creating class anymore. So we could create this invocation, we could create this command, send it to someone else, and then someone else executes it. A request can also be executed in isolation. We could store it and then recall it afterwards and then execute the command. Undo redo operations become now possible. If we store all commands in a list and then play the whole list, we repeat all the actions. Or we could say we undo a specific command out of this list and then delete it from the list. We could also switch the receiver where the command runs. The command can be used for multiple receivers. One drawback is that we of course increase the number of objects again in comparison to the strategy where we have for every method and for every behavior an own class. Here, in addition to this own class, we also have a bag of parameters and, a, and some data stored. And of course, there is a decision to be made how to store these parameters. We said a command has to be self-contained. Should we store copies of all parameters or should we store just references? 
copies will use up much memory. References could be that they are null pointers or that they are not valid anymore because the command is executed out of context or much time later and then the reference is not valid anymore. The command make it so. <laughs>